Industry 4.0 is one of the hottest topics in electronic engineering today. But what if, with all of this manufacturing innovation, we could also encourage sustainability, save energy, and lower our carbon footprints at the same time? We can, and it has everything to do with the motors we use. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Climate change is encouraging the acceleration of sustainable and renewable manufacturing processes and practices. And one way we can encourage sustainability in manufacturing is with the use of variable speed drive motor control. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Maurizio Garvandani and Naveen Dole from Analog Devices and I discuss the wide-ranging benefits of variable speed motors, the role that current feedback plays in variable speed motor control, and how precision measurement solutions for current feedback can lead to higher motor efficiency, energy savings, and enhanced sustainability. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Analog Devices. Hi, Naveen. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Emilia. Great to be here and looking forward to talk to you on this topic. Hi, Maurizio. Thank you for joining me. Hi, Emilia. Thank you for having me here. Absolutely. So, Naveen, can you talk to me a bit on the sustainability topic in relation to manufacturing? Yeah, sustainability is a very critical topic where everyone is working towards reducing their carbon footprints in order to achieve their net zero targets. Take any manufacturing process. Motors form the backbone of it. They are everywhere, from pumps to conveyor belt, from extruder press to robotics. Without motors, manufacturing is absolutely impossible. Now, if we take a look at the current situation, there are about 450 million installed motors with approximately 52 million motors being deployed year on year. In terms of energy usage, motors are responsible for consuming 30% of total energy used by the industry and approximately 70% of industrial energy usage. It is estimated that between 20% and 30% of all deployed motors in industries are inverter driven or connected to a variable speed drive. By moving more deployed motion assets from grid connected motors to inverter driven or variable speed drive driven, we can significantly reduce the energy consumption and CO2 emission of the 450 million units of motor deployed in industry. Moreover, if each motor was to be driven in the most efficient way possible, that is with the proper load matching and with an appropriate motor drive, it will have a potential to reduce the global energy usage by 10%, which is huge. Ultimately, in any manufacturing process, the primary goal should be to minimize negative environmental impact, conserve resources, and promote social responsibility throughout the manufacturing process. So, Naveen, there is a massive energy saving if we are able to control motors efficiently. So to drive this deployment faster, are governments implementing any regulations? Great question, Amelia. Yeah, governments around the world are actually increasing regulation to reduce carbon emission to meet their net zero emission targets. MEPS, Minimum Energy Performance Standards, are being rolled out to reduce industrial electricity consumptions. Under the current regulations, motors must reach the IE2, IE3, or IE4 efficiency level depending on their rated power and other characteristics. For instance, three-phase motor with a rated power between 750 watt and or equal to or below 1000 kilowatt must reach the IE3 level by July 2021. Motors between 75 kilowatt and 200 kilowatt must meet the IE4 level as of July 2023. The EU is, is the first place worldwide making the IE4 level mandatory for some categories of motors and many countries are actually following it since. Due to these recent legislation changes, we have actually noticed 22% growth in IE4 motor deployment, which is significant. So Naveen, outside of sustainability, are there any other key trends in manufacturing that affect the evolution of motor control? Yeah, there are others as well, actually. 
as we discussed earlier, sustainability is the major one as everyone is putting a lot of effort in reducing their carbon footprints and moving more towards renewable and sustainable manufacturing processes. The other trend which we are noticing are digitalization and agile automation. In terms of digitalization, we are seeing a great push towards access to motion insights. Manufacturer wants to have real-time data from their equipment, allowing them to optimize their manufacturing processes. The other trend is agile automation, which is all about optimization, less machine downtime, maximize manufacturing throughput and customization. All of these trends are constantly pushing motor control to evolve. Historically, the vast majority of the motors in industry were connected directly to the AC grid and operate at a fixed rotational speed. In fact, this is still the case for a huge number of industrial motors. The control process is then implemented by other mechanical means such as valves, baffles, and mechanical linkages. However, there is a significant system energy saving which can be achieved by operating the motors at the variable speed. This has led to a transition to inverter-driven motor systems. This system vary widely in terms of control performance. From open-loop inverter system, where control accuracy is limited but good enough to many application to variable speed drive, which incorporate position and current controller, provide much higher performance for more demanding application in which precise control of motor speed and torque is beneficial to the end application. In more complex industrial machinery, these systems are combined and operate together in a synchronized manner. A major trend in variable speed drive and in multi-axis machinery based on these is the move towards wider and more transparent connectivity where these now appear as ethernet connected devices within a broader industrial system. This brings huge advantages in terms of control, real-time insights, and productivity. We can say that motor drive not only enable agile production, they have the capability to have a big impact on sustainability by reducing carbon emission due to increased efficiency. Motor drive also enable digital transformation by collecting and transmitting motor data. Okay, so Maurizio, it's clear by this stage to achieve motor efficiency, manufacturers have to implement variable speed drives. Can you walk me through the main technology blocks of a variable speed drive? Yes, Emilia, of course. The main technology blocks for variable speed drives are the following. Power management is probably the most obvious block because every sub-block in the system requires power. Isolation is requiring high voltage motors to separate the motor drives and the motor itself from the low voltage secure control unit. And speaking of security, the digital security block guarantees that the connectivity with the outside world is done securely. Such a connectivity is achieved with the industrial ethernet block. Precision measurement, magnetic sensing, and machine health are involved in the system control feedback. The first two blocks are responsible to measure the position, torque, and speed of the motor in order to control its performance. Precision measurement is key to maximize the performance, thus the motor efficiency. Machine health provides system-level diagnostics. So let us now examine the overall architecture, starting from the power supplies. Most motor drives take their main power source from the AC grid, as shown in the orange block. This block uses isolated power supplies and AC to DC rectifiers to generate the suppliers for the three-phase inverter stage. Most drives also have a low-voltage auxiliary DC supply input, which is normally 24 volts in DC, that powers the control electronics indicated in green as secure control and secure connect. The three-phase inverter is where the power electronics to drive the motor is located, and this is connected to the motor itself. This is where the variable speed is generated. In many systems, the motor will have an encoder device attached to it that measures the position of the motor and feeds this back to the controller. Back in the drive, the secure control block is where the motor control algorithm is implemented. This takes input from the encoder, the inverter and the secure connect interface and outputs pulse width modulation signals back to the inverter. 
the secure connect block is where the user and the network interface interact with the drive. Finally, the block in yellow is where the current of the motor is being measured. This is a key block in the system to maximize performance and efficiency and therefore provide energy saving and enhance sustainability. Maurizio, you've highlighted the current feedback as a key block within the system. Why is that? So let us look briefly in a bit more detail at the current feedback path, as this is a fundamental building block in the overall control performance of the servo drive. In this diagram, the current feedback is the one in the blue box. This is where the motor current is being measured. Let us understand that the motor current is a direct function of the motor torque, and the bandwidth of the current feedback determines the overall response of the variable speed system. Precision measurement is very key here to provide accuracy, which will make the motor efficient. And this in turn saves energy and enables sustainability. So Maurizio, can you explain in a bit more detail how current feedback is implemented and what architecture I should decide to use in my design? Yes, of course. Let us start with the high voltage motors, say higher than 100 volts, where isolation in the current feedback is required. There are at least two ways to implement current feedback as shown in this schematic here. Option one on the left uses a serious shunt with an isolated sigma delta ADC. This solution provides a high level of measurement accuracy. An example of device is the ADUM770X family. Option two uses an AMR-based current sensor, the ADAF1080, an analog output part, which can be connected into an ADC. AMR is a magnetic sensing technology, which is contactless. The advantage here is that there is no need for shunt resistor and isolated power. Now let's look at the low voltage motors. Here isolation is not required. Low voltage motors, we refer them to less than 100 volts. Option one on the left uses a serial shunt with a high common mode current sense amplifier and ADC. The solution provides a high level of measurement accuracy. Option two is a less accurate approach to current feedback where the signal can be directly taken to an ADC via some signal conditioning using a relatively fast op-amp. This is a simple and low-cost solution for low-voltage motors. Maurizio, can you give us an idea of the types of products analog devices has to offer in this space? Yes, absolutely. These products are some examples of precision measurement solutions for the current feedback path. From left to right, the first one is an isolated Sigma Delta ADC the ADU-M7701, which has multiple channel options and 16 bit of resolution. Offset drift and noise are both very low, which help reduce motor torque ripple. The next one is a four mega sample per second and 16 bit SAR ADC, the AD7380. This is a simultaneous sampling dual ADC, which is needed in three phase motors where normally the current of two of the three phases is being monitored. The third phase is inferred from software algorithm. This ADC is an excellent SNR at 92.5 dB. Moving to the right, we have the contactless magnetic AMR sensor, the ADAF1080, which enables isolated current sensing without the need for shunt resistor and isolated power. This device offers wide bandwidth and wide dynamic measurement range. Last but not least, we have two high precision current sense amplifiers, the 8410A and the MAX49925. Both devices provide fast measurement in applications with motors that run at high PWM frequency. The former has the widest bandwidth, while the latter offers an on the fly programmable gain, enabling system software configurability. So I think anyone new to variable speed drives or motor drives in general will have gotten a great introduction here. But as we discussed a lot of information, can you summarize your key takeaways for variable speed drive implementation and ultimately to enable more sustainable manufacturing? So what should people keep in mind? Yes. So in summary... So large efficient savings can be achieved by moving from fixed speed motors to variable speed motors. 
The ability to vary the speed and the torque of the motor allows the following two things. Number one, the system speed and torque can be matched exactly to the load requirement. And number two, it allows the system to run more efficiently as it can be operated as its best efficiency point. Current feedback is critical for motor efficiency and energy saving. ADI offers precision measurement solutions for current feedback that lead to higher motor efficiency, energy saving, and enhanced sustainability. Great. So, Naveen, can you point out some key resources about variable speed drives that my audience can refer to? Yeah, for sure, Emilia. We have a lot of curated collateral material generated around variable speed drive to make customer journey easy. We have a dedicated variable speed drive landing page on analog.com that hosts all the content associated with the variable speed drive, such as two-page application spotlight, application overview video, technical block series, and webinar. And moreover, all product discussed today can be found on mouser.com, as well as range of other relevant motion control content. Perfect. Well, Naveen and Maurizio, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Emilia. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Emilia. Thanks for having us here. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal. <laughs>